One of the things you have to watch out for that might get you by surprise when you're traveling as a digital nomad is this. I'm gonna let you know about it. It happened to me and a little secret on how to cure it. So right now I'm at a surf camp hostel and I'm just chilling, everybody's kind of relaxed. The problem that you can come across when you're traveling as a digital nomad is culture shock. It's a real thing, or was for me, or that's how it felt. Um, but it happened about the second week, you start to feel a little disoriented. You might not, um, you might feel a little out of place with the culture, the language, everything's unfamiliar. Uh, of course, the food isn't familiar, the people aren't familiar, the location, you don't know where anything is. Nothing like simple things like convenience stores, dentists. Dog. The best way to avoid problems like that altogether is when you first get to a new location, as I suggest, or this is what I did, and it made a big difference. They went and hung out at a hostel for um, a week, and people in hostels, their mindset is completely different. That's than you would have, let's say, back home where you are in your major city. At home in Toronto where I was, everybody was just in work mode, busy mode, got their life, they're just blindfolders on, you know, autopilot. But here in the hostels, everybody is um, in social mode. Everybody wants to meet everybody, everyone wants to talk to everybody, everyone is so incredibly friendly and you'll make so many friends so fast in hostels. And there's a couple different types of hostels. You can do a co-working hostel, where you can, there's digital nomads working on their businesses and they're kind of like in a business kind of mindset, but they're still very social and they want to meet people, especially if they're at the hostel or there's also their surfing hostels and where I am now. And then there's the scuba diving hostels. And then there's just hostels in general where people are kind of on vacation mode and they just want a cheap um, way of meeting people. Just today, I just met like seven people. We all piled into the same van with the surfboards and we went for a drive to the beach and you got to know everybody in the van and then you come back and then after surfing and then you have a breakdown of you do coaching and everybody talks about your form and you make friends and so then you end up making these long lasting relationships that you can take off the hostel. Let me show you around this um, surf camp. Now this surf camp is um, called Wave House and they have hostels mixed, dormitory, girls only mixed and then they have private rooms as well. The, so the lesson, the lesson, the coaching, the video tutorial coaching, the video coaching and the and free breakfast and accommodations came to around eighty dollars a night U.S. and this is it's a really it's very luxurious. Uh, so for only ninety dollars to get all that, uh, it was it's really worth it. Let me show you this place. It's like a sanctuary, right in the heart of Changu, and um, there's so many um, surf camps to choose from. And then I just randomly found this one on Google. Let me show you around. So it's nice and quiet. I slept like a baby last night and uh, nice big outdoor shower, rain shower. So it's beautiful. You know, it's a great price. And uh, yeah, I recommend this place. It's super. So I would, if you've never tried surfing, I would seriously be open. I would consider trying it because it's exhilarating and um, I'd be open-minded about it because it's great cardiovascular, uh, improves your glutes, your legs, your thighs, your posture, the muscles in your shoulder. Uh, it's, there's so many benefits from it and you feel like a million dollars after um, surfing. So if you've never tried it, I would at least give it a try and see if you like it. Make sure you do get a lesson because it'll make it much more enjoyable.